Welcome to the first of a series of videos this year as we keep you updated on the developments at Body Rocket. It's already been a busy year with software and hardware upgrades as part of our transition away from our rough and ready prototypes to a system built for commercial release. Alongside that is our ongoing move from lab environments to real world ones. It was late 2021 when we took our first system out of the lab and wind tunnel and used it in a velodrome. The next spring we felt it was ready to start showing to professionals and after a series of demos with top teams and riders, we got an agreement to be the exclusive on-road aero providers for Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden. It was perfect for us as they are extremely data-driven and their three sport schedules means that the time and distraction of wind tunnel testings is particularly difficult to them. So last fall we took our first tentative steps out into the real world with a series of tests in St. George, Utah in the run-up to the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. Our development strategy has been to continue to push our learnings and our core value using as much stock hardware and electronics as possible. And you've seen that in the chunky sensors and electronics on our test bikes. However, last spring we knew it was finally time to commit the resources to a bespoke wireless protocol that would form the platform for the commercial versions of every part of our system. That proved to be a much bigger challenge than we'd ever anticipated, and it's been a source of some delays for the last six months. But I'm happy to say that is now behind us, and the next few months we'll see the integration of several key pieces of hardware we've designed but couldn't use until our new radio protocol was in place. Over the next two months, you'll see virtually every part of our bikes get upgrades, resulting in a system that's smaller, more robust, and built very close to the final production spec. We've started with the pedals. You won't see a big change in how they look, uh, but they now have all the uh, final electronics that will be in the consumer product. Um, these are uh, still a bit bulky as we can learn everything we need to learn uh, quickly on the larger ones, but here's a sneak peek of what those electronics boil down to in their final form. They'll slot into the axle like this in the final product. We're now working on upgrading the electronics in the top sensors before finally moving to the smaller sensor designs that we showed in the fall. While we've been waiting to move over to our new hardware, we've been busy progressing the data experience now. So where we can test, what useful data we can show athletes, and how quickly we can turn that data around after a run. On the velodrome, we've been working with the University of Kent to add track validation to our existing wind tunnel validation. They aren't quite ready to publish yet, but early data indicates that we are able to measure changes of 0 0.002 CDA. We've also been working with our alpha test athletes to help them better understand their aerodynamics. One of the guys was looking at their existing position versus one where they shrug their shoulders in a way that's a bit too uncomfortable to, to hold for too long. But what we found was with one helmet, it made very little difference at all. And with the other helmet, um, there was some, some significant change. We'll be working with them to see if we can transfer some of those benefits into a position that's more sustainable. And of course, we'll be testing on the road again in the future to see if those benefits uh, hold under a range of wind conditions. Speaking of wind conditions, we also spent a week in the Canary Islands in February, stress testing the system in some pretty challenging wind conditions. We also tested improvements in our live data based on our learnings from St. George, and it was our first chance to, this year to do some work with Christian and Gustav. I won't give too much away here, but be sure to watch the next installment of the Norwegian Method when it comes out on YouTube in a few weeks. Of course, a cyclist aerodynamics in the real world are a lot messier than in a wind tunnel or a velodrome. But rather than ignore that and hope controlled tests are good enough, we're, we're taking all that data and helping you make sense of it. For starters, you don't have a constant CDA any more than your bike frame or wheels does in, in varying wind conditions. So we want to give you the same kind of rich data on your own body that you'd expect to get from a bike manufacturer on their new bike. As more and more of our testing moves to the outdoors, you'll see a lot of progression in this area. We've got more sessions planned with Christian and Gustav over the coming months, as well as additional velodrome testing. June is going to be a big month for us because once all the upgrades are in place, it's time for our next big leap in the last phase of our alpha testing. And that is to leave Christian and Gustav's body rocket equipped bikes with them. Up until now, we've always been there to run the systems and tend to anything that breaks. But from June, they should be robust enough to run every day without us being there. And that's going to be a big, big moment for the team. Once we pass that hurdle, it sets off a larger run of parts as we lay the groundwork for proper beta testing, trials with our production partners, and very likely the announcement of a few more athletes that we'll be working with. Thanks so much to everyone who supported us so far, or is even just following along on our journey and, and rooting for us. We've cleared some really big technical hurdles to get this far, and I'm so proud of what the whole team has accomplished. There's still a lot of challenges ahead for us this year, but increasingly, 
Those challenges involve being outside on a bike and with athletes, and that makes solving them a lot more fun. I'll see you in the next installment.